Now in Charlotte, they ran three towns. And three towns a night, okay? And then for Greensboro, they'd all come and they'd have a major, um, they, they'd only run Greensboro or something like maybe maybe two towns that night, the Crummy Town in Greensboro, or some of the big ones, right. where they bring everybody on. But for, for usual, it was three towns a night. And one of the towns would always sell out, no matter who his opponent was, and no matter who his tag team partner was, and no matter what else was on the card, one guy always sold out. So it couldn't have been an accident for a year and a half that I was there. Maybe you haven't heard of him, Ric Flair? Ha. Huh. Okay. Well, then we were getting, <laughs> you know, he, it doesn't matter who his opponent was. Now, I'm not saying that Wahoo McDaniel didn't draw his share of the money. Right. But then when they separated, Ric Flair drew anyway. And, and, and also Ricky Steamboat came in and drew mega money with Ric Flair. But Ric Flair was drawing anyway. In other words, but uh, Ricky Steamboat brought it to new heights. But the man was over, okay? And he was over before I got there. Right. And I was just in awe of him, I just said, could not believe that this guy was this great. And he'd flop his hair around and this and that. He'd, he'd, he'd bring these $10 million robes into the dressing room and he'd act like he found them. Huh. You know, he's just, <laughs> just a fun person. His dressing room was always a happy one. There was, uh, on the other hand, there was the Andersons. They would come into um, the dressing room already with the excuses. And by say they, when I say they, I mean Oli. Gene wouldn't say anything. Gene was nondescript. Right. Gene just shook his head and smoked cigarettes and didn't say much except, hey, thank you very much. You know, you know, you know the, um, Jack, Dynamite Jack Evans did an imitation of Gene, uh, the late Gene Anderson, God Keep His Soul. And uh, Gene Anderson is an opera singer. Neely Paiachi. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to ask you about Oli later on in the interview because like, he had some uh, not so nice things to say about you and your family. Is that a fact? Yeah, I'll, I'll bring Such it up. a wonderful man. You would think <laughs> that he was uh, with the milk of human kindness by the quart in every vein. Well, what happened? I mean, Oli Anderson doesn't like me, and for very good reason. You can tell the story now since we're on it. Well, I'm on a roll, baby. Okay. <laughs> and uh, a man my age, you know, don't stop him when he's on a roll. Um. He would always be with the excuses, or we're not going to draw because. And he would have a new one every time he came in. And he's very creative. It's not going to be too good tonight because. And the time that got me is when um, Jimmy Carter won the presidential election. Evidently, it was a Tuesday in November. Huh. And he says, well, we're not going to draw because, you know, the presidential election. Well, that's all well and good. That sounds like a pretty good excuse. But then I go to the Charlotte uh, YMCA and see some of the other boys that were in the other towns. How did you, how did you guys do? Uh, sold out, Ric Flair. And I thought, that, so, that it, so on Wednesday, he said, well, we're not going to do very well because blah, blah, blah. So I said, well, last night you didn't draw because of the presidential elections. But Ric Flair, they must not have voted very much in his precinct. <laughs> you know, because everybody came to the matches. Right. Well, the truth was, and plus, his dressing room was like a negative pallor. Oh, you know. And these guys, may I speak to you about philosophy of wrestling? Because everybody thinks they're a reincarnated Luthez. Everybody, all these old timers, they say, and even the new timers, some of them, they go, it's about wrestling. Remember, it says wrestling on the marquee. Remember, <laughs> wrestling on the marquee. What does this say? All right, video. Okay, no wrestling on the marquee. Should How do you guys stay in business without wrestling on the marquee? Well, wrestling on the marquee doesn't mean anything. May I say that? And let me prove it. In high school, in college, and at the Olympic level, they have wrestling on the marquee, and it's real. And guess what else it is? Real boring. And real lousy tickets sold. And without the, what's the most important? Why is Ric Flair Ric Flair? Because of the people. Now you can, you can show it on TV. Does that mean they're gonna buy tickets? No. Evidently, he caused some type of commotion. Now Ole Anderson would knock Ric Flair and then kiss his ass to his face. He said, 
that all Ric Flair does is try to entertain the people. And he said, the, and the, 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 his proof of that was when he was introduced <clears throat> that 20% or 30% of the audience was actually applauding him and everybody else was uh, booing. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, the opposite. I'm a little older, right? And I'm sleep deprived because <laughs> I believe in four, uh, ten hours of sleep a night and fourteen hours of relaxation, and I'm just not getting it right <laughs> now because we're in Boston and I live in Florida. So he says because he has some of the audience cheering him means he's ineffective as a heel, and that's when he said how the Andersons when we wrestle it's all booze. So I said, well, how do you get any reaction out of an empty chair anyway? <laughs> oh, was he angry at me? <laughs> that, that didn't get over. All right. Okay? <laughs> so, but I couldn't stand it anymore because I liked Ric Flair. I'm sorry. You know, maybe you don't. I do. You know, and there is some jealousy involved. And please, if I were the jealous type, I probably would have eaten a hole through my own liver by now <laughs> because the Macho Man's my brother. And everybody. Everybody that calls me up is trying to, you know, butter me up to get to them. You see what I mean? Right. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with it because uh, I've done very well, you know, whatever. You know, I can handle it. And, uh, I mean, he's not that way. He doesn't think about Jay Leno having a better job than him. Right. You know, in other words, I don't want to be an ungrateful person with two loaves of bread under each arm, you know, complaining that I'm starving to death. Because I had beautiful memories in the business, and that's a lot more than people of greater ability, you know, got to have. But back to Oli, you know, he's very angry at me because, and then I, we started in on each other. Um, he said he gave me that whole lecture. It says wrestling on the marquee, and Ric Flair is just an entertainer. I said, I went outside, and it does say wrestling on the marquee, but it says tickets at the tickets. T I C K E T S tickets at the box office. And with the Andersons, all we have is excuses, but we have so many empty seats. And he said, We drew money in this territory, blah, 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 blah. He's talking about something that happened many, many years ago, and he's elevating himself that, and this is only because of this and that and this and that. And then he blamed blame whoever his opponent was, Bravo and Woods. Well, what happens is, Ric Flair worked with Bravo and Woods sometime, and they and they still drew a sellout. Huh. <laughs> uh, and when I say a sellout, let me go back. There's all kinds of sellouts. There's SRO sellouts, standing room only means, and well, then there's other sellouts where the fireman says, no more, you've got to, no more tickets. You see, you see what I mean? There's, there's all different, when you hear about a sellout, there's right. all different types. A full house, that means you can still have a couple hundred more walk in. Right. You know, anyway, so... What happened, and this is why he really doesn't like me. Two reasons. Once I, once we started getting on each other, you know, it started getting a little bit heated. Okay? And Oli's a smart guy, and he's, you know, he can present himself very well. And this is, not, this is no idiot. However, my validation was, where's the audience? And that's the running gag we had. And <laughs> here's what happened. We're in Spartanburg in front of a record low. <laughs> and we're in a battle royal. My brother's there, macho man, but he only weighed 190. And Bravo and Woods and a bunch of guys and the Andersons, and they've had enough of me. So Gene Anderson, who I had never had any trouble with, and he was helping George Scott with the book. Right. Oli says, we're going to teach you a lesson tonight. Oh. So Gene gets in the ring with me, and he, after we get everybody, and everybody's watching it, I don't know what's going on. A little slow for a genius. <laughs> he locks up real stiff with me, he gets behind me, he picks me up, takes me down, and throws me on, on my belly. And I knew what was going on then. So I got up to my hands and knees, and I sat out, switched him, Got him in the head and arm liver in the deep waist and pinned him. Now, I like Gene. That's why I didn't put the sugar on him, which is a submission hold. I just thought it was good enough to pin him and to keep him down for a ridiculous amount of time. Right. Okay? So it wasn't the planned finish? No, this was a battle royal. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Right. This is a battle royal. Yeah. No, right. I mean, it was... 
Obviously. Even a great battle royal is mostly scrambled eggs, right, especially right. when there's so many people in the ring. So now Bravo and Woods are laughing their butts off and making fun of Gene, who's underneath me. Right. And, you know, I've never had any trouble with Gene, but if you want to have a shoot with me, tell me first, you know. And then my brother is loving it. And, and then Randy's, Randy says, Oh, you got to try it. My brother's on a roll here. You know, come on, come on. Let's... And I let Gene up, and Ole just puts his head down. But what I found out later was that uh, Gene was the tougher of the two Andersons. And what they still don't know was, and I, I may as well let you know, my brother was the tougher of the two Poffos. You know, and how do I know that? By countless shoots. Now, my only chance to get even with my brother is I'll wait about 35 years, 40, and stand on his oxygen hose. Maybe then I get my <laughs> revenge. But in the meantime, Yes, he's better than me, you know, as, as that type of thing. So, so then our lives became like murder because they were what I'd call poor sportsmanship. All right. So then he gets on me about my dubious sexuality. He started calling me a fag, fag this, fag that, fag this, and I just took it like a man, like a man. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't, you know, I'm not a homosexual, but I'm not homophobic either. Right. And I'm not adverse to using effeminate gimmicks in order to draw money because I was in business to make money. So I was thinking to myself, what would an intelligent man do? You know, when confronted with this fact that here's this big bully that won't wrestle me, acts like a tough guy, and he's going on and on about me being a fag or a politically correct homosexual or a, let's say, a... Uh, not the most masculine of his gender, even though he won't wrestle me. Well, I thought, what would an intelligent man do? And then I did the opposite, okay? <laughs> Here's what I did. I noticed that even though he was a married with children type guy, that he had a girl in every port, <laughs> okay? Now, in those days, I was like 21, 22 years old. I didn't have a girl in every port. I was going through them like um, Scott Towles. You see what I mean? I, right. I, I was interested in meeting new people. And uh, that's part of, the, part of the fun of wrestling is, did you know that there are women of easy virtue? Huh. And uh, they were willing to trade favors for um, getting their picture taken with you. And I always treated these groupies very well. I mean, I always, I try to leave them happier than when I met them. You know, uh, I mean, some of the guys, would put them calcium or now it would be roofies, you know what I'm saying? Right. Shave their heads, shave their eyebrows, <laughs> uh, defecate on them, you know, and um, I never got the idea of that. I was always very grateful for whatever attention I could get. So, and the towns that only wasn't, one by one, I would accept the favors of his girls. And then it got around. Okay? <laughs> so then... Ole confronts me finally, and if he liked me at all before then, he didn't like me now. Right. I mean, it's bad enough that I, when being shot upon, here here a shoot interview, <laughs> that, I mean, pardon me for defending myself against Gene Anderson, but uh, if you saw pictures of Gene Anderson, I wasn't surprised when he died. He was a very unhealthy man. He had a bloated stomach. It was hard as a rock, but that's an indication of ill health. He also had puffy under his eyes, and um, he just didn't look well after any of his matches, and he smoked. So, Ole finally confronts me, and Ole should have done this alone with him and I. And he says, All right, Pafo, how do you like my used pussy? And I said, Well, after you get past the part that's used, it's not bad. Well, turns out Ole has a big mouth and a small dick. <laughs> and that's probably why he compensates by being aggressive and being a bully. But the thing is, when I, when I offered him to, you know, after, after the defeat of his synthetic brother Gene, I said, let's go. He wouldn't. He dropped his head. So, I mean, I'm saying, no, I'm not a homosexual. 
I don't always use my noodle, as, uh, as my grandfather used to say. And perhaps my mouth was a little bit too big. Maybe I should have respected my elders. But I, find, I found being in the dressing room with Ole Anderson excruciatingly boring. And I also liked Ric Flair so much. And I was so respectful of him and so grateful that I still have the money that he drew. You know, my end of it, which is much less. But don't forget, in my bucket, there is a bottom. There's no hole in my bucket. So whatever I make, even with an eyedropper, I still have today. Right.